So, Ibushi and Marufuji. Ibushi Marufuji. It was interesting because it was like it was easy to say, "Oh, what a horrible, terrible match that was," you know. And, and most people I talked, you know, talked with, I spoke with right after the match, Japanese or American. This guy, Oh, that was a worst match I've ever seen. It's like a bad match. This, that. Like, it is easy to say it was a bad match when you are expecting video game Ibushi against video game Marufuji. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the gen more, more like a ca not a casual, but like more element, you no know, intermediate wrestling level, you know, intermediate level fans that mm -hmm. you expect. You know, same content and same like character and what you expect you you will be able to see, you know, what Ibushi does and what, what Maruji does. And you are expecting a certain body movements like a video game, you know, like then it was the night that the Ibushi, well for that matter, Maruji, showed us that they were human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That uh, it's easy to say that the uh, it wasn't best textbook Ibushi match. Neither was the textbook Maruhuji match. But Maruhuji 44, Ibushi, he looks young, but 41, you know? And right, physically, it was not what you basically expected. But it was very important to, for us to learn that. That the... It, it was important for you know each guy's career that back in 2009 they were gonna have sing the first single match and one of them got injured and postponed and 2011 they were gonna have a you know very you know this dream match single match again and one of them got injured postponed again so it was like 14 years in making mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and in the meantime like i said maru fuji you know, turned 44 ibushi 41 and all injured and banged up too. And Ibushi gave us a good hint right at the beginning of the match. It's hard at the building, but in uh, your Abema TV, you know, monitor, mm -hmm. like close up shot of Ibushi, he's like, he had this tear. It's like, mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, he wanted this match to happen. Mm -hmm. And also, this not video game textbook. Ibushi, that he stood there, not moving, and then all of a sudden this tear came down. It's like, so we have to really read it or go through his mind. You know, he's so happy to have this match finally take place, or that he is the one, he's the first one to admit it's not the, your textbook Ibushi physic anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just knew that. But he was able to carry this match, meaningful match, as much as he could. Of course, physically, he's not in 100%, you know, and he missed a lot of signature, signature spot too. If you remember that uh, sweep and go into your, you know, moonsault, that he, he messed that up. And there's another spot where you stand on the second rope, guys on the apron, you pull up and do the super German suplex, stuff like that, that he messed that up. And uh, oh, he jumped on the second rope. He couldn't even do it. And there's, there's a few spots that's like evidently that, right, he's not what he used to be. And either was Marufuji. But they, they had this very meaningful, what, 30-minute uh, match. Yeah. And it was interesting that I thought you were going to say, no, oh, that was a bad match. But you didn't think it was a bad match. It's well, the, the one big point of the match is that Ibushi had two broken ankles. Before, yeah. You know, so that's going to affect, I mean... If that's taken into account, and then you watch the match, you know, I think that plus the idea of that match was all about subtext. That wasn't, like you said, the video game. Flashy. It, it, yeah. it was, it, they, I think people expected them to play the hits, play their hits, you know? Yeah, and then they Marfuji. do outrageous, outrageous arrow maneuvers or version of it or something like that. They wanted fireworks and they got more of a story and people. Mm -hmm. People were disappointed because, like you said, their expectations, but also it turned ugly so quickly, especially on the internet, that it became that's, that's what I'm the, talking about. The general opinion before even people I think even saw it, or they maybe I don't know what they saw. Everyone is 
chiming in on the same activity or event, but they all saw different pieces of it, or they're just glomming they, onto another they really popular show opinion. Show them where they are, though. Yeah, how they understand wrestling. Very much so. It exposed yeah, a lot of people for sure, mm -hmm. and yeah. it also it it speaks to how differently the Western audience interprets certain oh, aspects. Oh, oh Japanese of, fans too. Same, yes, yeah, and vice versa. So yeah, saying, saying the same thing right away. It's like, oh, that was a horrible match. Oh, that was the worst match I've seen live. It's, it's like it's easy to say that it was a bad match if you see just. I mean, in general so, surface. It, honestly, if people think that, if they truly believe that is terrible wrestling. Matt, yeah. I, I mean, okay. These two guys. What's good? With 30 yeah. minutes, broken ankles. And you're still saying, and, and we all watched and we all know that it's not as bad as everybody said. And bad is a, it, considering the context, especially, it's a really, really silly thing to say. I think people like to sound cool and smart and present themselves online like that it's just how it is every culture but like i was saying it's just ibushi is also some kind of magnet type of character because he mag he, he attracts a lot of people that want there is something that people have out for him they have a heart on for ibushi i don't know what it is i don't know what it is with these types of fans that are really really kind of almost obsessed with their feelings their negative feelings about ibushi and i think that overshadowed the actual match yeah yeah because mm. probably partially because ibushi was the type of wrestler up to this point that sure. never showed emotion partly yeah perfect video game ibushi wrestling right mm -hmm. perfect move outrageous spinning and rolling and I mean things that you creative can imagine. aerial right. wrestling yeah. and and yeah. kickboxing and what he does best we all we all know him for. I mean, it looks like a video game. Yeah, you know. I mean, yeah. he's he has his own perfect style of yeah. wrestling that he presents. It's his mm -hmm. his Ibushi style. Mm -hmm. it's, it takes yeah. from a lot of different uh, styles, but yeah, it's something that's not the usual type of wrestling. It's it's his it's Ibushi style, and what we got was more. I guess conservative version of Ibushi it wasn't that or human version, human, of it. sure. Oh, very human, yeah. And so, if we're judging wrestling based on, re I don't know, that's the thing when people say this is good, this is bad, this is terrible, this is awesome. What's their criteria, really? What are you basing it? Are you basing uh, it on just the moves? Yeah, are you basing it, it on the there's, there's business no of it? criteria or formula that fits to everybody? That's it's the like problem. It, but it exposed who's watching, who's yes. saying things. Sure, sure. Yeah. It exposed yeah. who actually stuck with it. And you can tell when somebody watched something and fully absorbed it. And they had, I have this opinion on this because A, B, and C. And I go, okay, maybe I don't agree with it, but I get what you're, what you're saying and where you're coming from. And then there's just the people that like to do the game, say they like to just go, ah, stupid, bad, Ibushi sucks. <laughs> He's stupid, you know, or nothing even really intelligent, yeah, yeah. or even worse. Actually, like, it was very, I mean, one of the first matches that I actually enjoyed uh, Ibushi's match, hmm. you know, yeah, because for instance, Ibushi Kenny Omega super match, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't my cup of tea, sure, you know, ever. So, I mean, good moves, you know, and the fatigue, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, sometimes 45 minutes. You know, that nonstop this and that, but <clears throat> that's not the wrestling I grew up watching and enjoy as a, like a storytelling. You know, it's just like going to different, you know, what do you call it, like a pages of game, you know, like you clear a certain stage, you be, beat some guys and you go clear another page, clear, and it's like going another page phase. Mm -hmm. And that was about it. It wasn't my wrestling. I mean, that's how I look at it. But the, that the forty-four year old Maruhuji taken up up on forty one year old Ibushi. Now it's like let's see what they can do. And they really showed us what they are there, you know, where they are today. Yeah. So human. And evidently that the Keiji Muto on color commentary was feeling the same thing. Oh, these two are the epitome of the outrageous stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right at the beginning. Yeah. I think these two created the style. 
That's what it's like. Right. But it, that's not what they were doing that night. I mean, it was 2009, 2010. It was a while ago. It was over a decade ago. Yeah. And I, I also think that one of the, the it's almost criminal that we don't, we're not talking about Marufuji enough in this match because I imagine if this was a match with Ibushi and another wrestler, I don't imagine it would have, I, I imagine it would have played out a lot differently. And if you go back and you watch and just pay attention to Marufuji, they call him a genius because he knows where to be at every single moment that he needs to be. He has presence of mind to know where he needs to be, what yeah, he needs yeah. to do. He, like it, it's very, you could tell wrestling pro wrestling is in his like blood or the DNA almost. It, it, I think he, without, you know, saying exactly what happened in the match, go watch him and watch how he preserved the match. And really, yeah, yeah. he, it, it, everybody, that's the thing. Everybody's Ibushi, Ibushi, Ibushi couldn't do a moonsault. He had two broken ankles. Okay. Well, he's throwing Mara Fuji was, of course, brilliant. I think we're going to talk about this in a year or a couple of years from now, we're going to look at it differently. Mm-hmm. It was a very, oh, was a, yeah. there was a lot of heat, not in the wrestling heat. I mean, like a lot of like people were very hot that week and I saw the numbers. I mean, the interest in Noah and that match was very hot that week, but then it came down. People settled down. People got their bearings and, you know, they either changed their opinion. They stopped talking about it. They moved on. Or, you know, give it a year, give it five years and go watch it and see if you have the same opinion. If these same fans are still around. Exactly. And sometimes, <laughs> often, five years not, from now, often they yeah, forgot. You everything. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I kind of say, well, we got, I'm not sure if they can wait another five. I mean, oh, they'll be around another five years con- constantly watching wrestling. You know, are they even the wrestling fan? Are they a trending type of like a, what's so cool? And then watch wrestling. It's, Wrestling fans are different creatures, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But the Maru Fuji, it was actually Maru Fuji match. It was Maru celebrating Fuji his 25th match, yeah, anniversary yeah, debut. Yeah. And also, he's more Mr. Noah than anybody. Of course. He yeah. is Mr. Noah. He is Mr. Noah. From, Absolutely. From Misawa Kobashi's day into this or dark period of, of pro wrestling, you know, into all the new guys coming in, or he's still there. You know what I'm he's saying? like John Cena or Tanahashi. He's, yeah, he's Maru yeah, Fuji. Pretty is, much so, yeah. Maru Fuji is Noor. He's like the captain of the team. Yeah, he's, I think so, I think so. Yeah. And also, he was uh, the, the chosen one from Misawa himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and he's also, be, yeah. He, he was chosen from Misawa, and he's yeah, the one yeah. who got Muto to come over. To come over, yeah. Because same, I mean, like, Muto and Misawa never met in single match in their time, but for Marufuji's mind, what they needed for Pro Wrestling Noah that year, these Mr. Keiji Muto come over here and join the just hope this Pro Wrestling Noah formula. Mm-hmm. And Muto did it, you know. He did and it Muto's also, way. It was Muto era. It was uh, yeah, yeah. Well, they also Misawa and Muto were the two, you know distinctive superstar in, in the 90s into 2000 but they never met and the misawa's gone i'm sorry but the maruji looked at muto like he's available mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and muto should be in this cluster and finish his you know legendary wrestling career in pro wrestling no ring and that's exactly what muto did yeah and uh, yeah maruji basically orchestrated the whole thing Mm. Yeah. So in and out of ring. Yes. So very, very important. important. Yeah. Very important. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So and also what was interesting was that uh, this we talked about we we're talking about yeah, we've been we've been talking about this the Ibushi Maruhuji match, but it was a main event, non-title match, but actual GHC title match was a match before that. Mm-hmm. The champion Kenwo against Manab Soya. And on paper, Kenwo against Manabu Soya GHC title match. Huh. Hmm. Right? Then it, they gave best match of their, you know, oh. well, especially well, Kenwo's been good. He's been good, but the, the, so, Manabu Soya's best match in his career, though. Definitely. Basically, definitely. Yeah. His whole year, 2023, has been the best year of his career. He's had mm-hmm. his best match. He but had a great now that match. He, it was hard for people to pay attention to him. Yes. Yeah, because you know he's saying? been around as good as, for a as, long good as he time. is. 
He's yeah. he's he's like uh, someone like a Tomohiro Ishii and that he's been around. I used to watch him. Yeah, a lot. yeah, and uh, also legitimate wrestling background and yeah. everything. You know, just that people are not paying attention. Like he's like a Mark Henry or somebody. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know I always saying? used yeah. to see him with Omori in all Japan. Uh, yeah, get yeah. get wild where they wore the bearskin bearskin. Yeah, yeah uh, that too. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he was tag team partner of somebody. Uh, Takawa Omori. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like somebody meaning that the, he wasn't the oh, main somebody, guy. Yes, he was the yeah. second. He was the younger guy. Yeah, it, it yeah. was Omori's team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was. He, he was had the long like, hair. Yeah, and also he came to all, pro wrestling nor with other guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He he wasn't it. But mm -hmm. uh, all along, he's been here, and then he just this was that this was uh, you know pretty much uh, Manabu Soya's night that mm -hmm. people actually believed him that the, this guy is a single title match caliber guy, and probably the one of the strongest powerhouse type wrestler in Japan now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. very athletic. He did a tope in the uh, in the match. Oh, a real heavy. I lost my brain. <laughs> oh my god! It was yeah, such a. Yeah. He's very dramatic in his wrestling. He's very explosive. He like, apparently so, he can fly too. Yeah, and Wonderful. wrestler can change uh, mm. overnight. I'm talking about people's perception can change yeah. overnight. Oh yeah. So that was a night that people say, "Oh wow, this guy is a main event guy." Absolutely. Ko. <laughs> He's been real good. He's yeah. been real good. I mean, size, pretty, I mean, a lot smaller than your traditional heavyweight champions, you know, mm -hmm. compared to Misawa or Kobashi or, you know, Muto for that matter, you know, Chono Hashimoto. Or, it's like he's not really tall, but <laughs> he, I mean, he's like so focused. But he, he carries, does... yeah, yeah. He carries himself, he carries himself as superstar. He has the presence, and he also has what the other guys didn't have. What he lacks in size, he has a legitimate martial arts background. A very successful yeah, one. Nihon, Nippon Kenpo national mm -hmm. champion. Yeah. He was like the youngest champion at the time. I don't know if it's still that he mm -hmm. holds that record. But Probably people are not so familiar with I mean, the listeners out there. Nippon mm. Kenpo is like Kenpo. your Japanese-style karate boxing. You know? Yeah, Japanese MMA or something like that. Yeah, I, but there's no, like a, no submission. It's like a kicking and punching this? with dogi. You kicking and punching, and you wear the face mask, yeah, yeah, right, head right. Gear, chest gear, and yeah, it's much like boxing, but there is a lot of a, a grappling esque kind of skill, like yeah, standing arm locks, or but yeah, standing like, like a judo style, like you use it to put them, uh, knock them out, and karate, yeah, too, yeah, like sweeps. So and he, such. yeah, he was a Nippon Kenpo national champion in high school. That well, the Kenpo obviously is ring name Ken. Fist. fist oh is king mm -hmm. king of fist mm -hmm. that's his ring name from day one but he was discovered by shin you know jinsei shinzaki he's from yeah from tokushima yeah hakushi in mm. in america he was discovered by him and he's he's from same hometown tokushima someplace else meaning that the excursion you would think you you were sent to mexico somewhere right Mm -hmm. Instead, he was sent to Okinawa. Actually, <laughs> seriously, yeah, it's Ob not where you usually go for an excursion. Some people would think that's a vacation. Uh, yeah, but the, there was a place in Okinawa at the time. Okinawa Pro Wrestling it runs show every night. You know, with Super Dolphin. Yeah, and he had a mask on as a rookie and spent one year over there and had a, over three hundred matches before he came back to Michinoku Pro Wrestling. Where was he the whole year? He was gone and he was he had a mask on. He was playing somebody else down in Okinawa and had a 300 matches or so under his belt. Then came back like a very seasoned guy, you know, he's ready to go. And he and he and Hayato Jun Fujita Jr. Hayato was mm. he was a big rival for Michinoku's Tohoku title. Yeah. Then he asked that the Kenho asked Shinzaki. It's like, I would like to go Noah. Then he set the thing up and said, okay, I'll, I'll arrange that you, you'll be working Noah. And he's been doing that Noah thing ever since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's a real good thing. Shinzaki gave him that name, Keno. Yeah, Keno, and then also opportunity to go, go actually go to Tokyo and work with Pro Wrestling Noah. And after you join Noah, you're on your own. Then Congo and all these things. And, and he,
Shinzaki has been showing up every now and then in the pro wrestling Noah matches. He was there just in December. Oh, okay. Him, as, as a guest appearance. Him but and uh, like... Fujinami. They had the dream match. Uh, at, ah, okay. Okay. I think I was in Yokohama. Yeah. It was Keno oh, and yeah. Shinzaki versus Soya and Fujinami and right. kind of preview of the match that just happened this month. Because of the Shinzaki's character and Keno's character, he wouldn't be doing much of a mic, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, Keno does mic, you know? But it's all in his Keno character that he doesn't do anything else. So he wouldn't be talking about his own, I mean, real background that much, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. But the, I believe he, he he really is a good, good Noah GHC champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's just the beginning. He, he's going to have a match in a couple of weeks against EO Del Dr. Wagner Jr. In All right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very interesting that the, the whole week, the, the beginning of this January, you know, oh, it's been three weeks since that the, uh, that the it's crazy. It's flying by. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, Ibushimaru Fuji match, but the end of the year into New Year's into you know New the, the Tokyo you know New Japan, to, you know Tokyo Dome, Wrestle Kingdom to Pro Wrestling Noah's Ariake Arena card, and then New Japan's New Year Dash thing, and it's like wow, it's like January, a lot of things already happened. Yeah. Mm, yeah. January yeah. is always, it's always busy, busy time of the month, especially in Japanese pro wrestling. I guess, I guess. It's yeah. Like, it's like a fiscal beginning of the year feeling. Yeah. Well, because New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day is the biggest holiday in Japan. And mm -hmm. yeah. And the biggest news came right after this January thing that Kazuchika Okada quitting and leaving yeah. New Japan pro wrestling, the biggest superstar of this last decade. Yeah. Mm. That yeah. I think it surprised did, a lot of people. Yeah. And how is that, you know, news taking, you know, like even with this so called more American English speaking podcast world? Sure. Well, <sighs> it's funny you meant we're, we're recording on the night that he just he appeared in uh, TNA. But I believe this was a, a planned appearance. Uh, it, it had already happened, or I think it was taped this weekend or something. But I, I think it's a one-off. But more yeah. people speculating. People are speculating and mixing it with what they want to see. Yeah, but the, the, they don't believe he he would join TNA Impact. <laughs> There's always a handful of people who believe all kinds of things that he would go there that he'll go somewhere AEW. I, I have no idea i mean if you're to think about it without knowing anything else uh, i have no idea what he wants i know he just had a child and i know he just got married and i imagine how old is he 34 35 36 36 so it's you yeah, know yeah. what's the next step what's the next step if you go to AEW what you could do Kenny next Omega step Okada oh again. no! Next step will definitely will be WWE. That's the thing. I'm, when I think WWE, everything is fresh for him there. I mean, any match: Okada Anything. against Seth Rollins, Okada against Cody Rhodes, Okada against Roman Reigns, Okada against anybody. Kevin, Kevin Owens, anybody. It's imagine all, him against a, a, all dream dream matches, like a Chad Gable, or imagine him in the ring with someone like Omos. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all new. It's all fresh. Of course. And of the course. money is much different. So based on all that, it makes and the also most sense. going you got a lot of English speaking world think this like well the straight to AEW, right? But it's like Kenny Omega, that the Will Osprey, the what, what not? It's like almost rerun of what, <laughs> rerun. I like that. Yeah, that, yeah. Took already took place in New Japan ring. And mm -hmm. you've seen it, you know. For Okada, it's kind of like a being there done that. Yeah, that's and the especially thing. Especially like, uh, yeah, that uh, Brian, you know, uh, I was going to, I almost said almost. Da 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 Brian, <laughs> Daniel Bryan. So mm, close. Brian, Brian Danielson mm. against Okada just happened in Tokyo, though. Yeah. And AEW last year. Mm -hmm. and these things already took place and nothing new. Plus, like guys like Jay, Jay White, they're there. Sure. Yeah, so it's nothing new. Right for him, and right. no right. ground to conquer, and also, or maybe some people disagree with this, but the Okada right now is already above everybody else in AEW. You know, 
I mean, it's hard to argue. Yeah, so so WWE is the only place. The only place. And he's hinting it, you know, this is like very last night. Was not the last night because the one one more important match is coming. But the last Korakuen Ho appearance, never six man tag team title champion trio of Okada, Tanahashi, and Ishii, right? They beat Mikey Nicholson and Shane Haste and Fujita. Then you know defend his the never six man tag title. Then relinquish the title to return, and Okada. Announced this that the, this is his final chance to do a new thing. He already gave the answer. Yeah, this is my final chance to go into some new challenge, mm -hmm. new thing, start the new thing. So I don't think AEW is anything new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And WWE just signed a new television deal in Japan with Abema. Oh yes. god, yeah, yeah. It's like and. You cannot. Was it like, there were a lot of people in Japan already signed with WWE Network, right? Oh, that's right. And, yeah, yeah. But uh, they, including myself, WWE Network sent us all the Japanese subscribers email saying that the, all the uh, the live. I was gonna say pay per view, but they don't call it pay per view. Mm. A prime live live event. premium live events. Okay, PLE. PLE. Yeah, will not be available. In WWE Network in Japan, instead, please be subscribing Abema instead from this point forward. Oh my gosh, I I have subscription of both Abema and WWE Network. In WWE ne Network, I still want to subscribe it because I want to watch you know, real old archives, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, or the AWA or Crockett or you know like a real old stuff like a WWWF or something. Bob Backlund, Superstar Billy Grant. I, I like to watch it. And the rumor says that the WWE Network could be shutting down at the end of 2024 too, right? I don't know. But it's part of Peacock too. It's mm. completely different yeah. platform. But uh, WWE, when you say WWE in Japan, it's pretty much Abema now. That's yeah. right. So pulling that to Okada, I mean, it makes sense if you want something new and you're trying to grow something in Japan. Understandable. There's all kinds of options, but it's all up to what the guy wants to do. And I did hear we, once in an interview he said his dream opponent is The Rock. That should yeah, happen. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, plus he hasn't been. Sure, you know, yeah. So he has to be new, whole, whole new ground. Mm. The only place is WWE, and also that the uh, oh, no, the point we need to point out this is like a, he. It's like he's leaving New Japan. Very good term, too. Hmm. He, technically, Okada's contract expires on January 31st, technically. Okay. But he's honoring two more two more dates. Hmm. You know, one in, in February in Sapporo and February 11th in Osaka. 12 years ago, 2012, in February. Same Osaka Fritz building, return of Okada, and then champion, IWGP champion Tanahashi, challenger, return of Okada from TNA, met in a very historical match. That was a night Star Wars born. They're, they're called it Rainmaker, Rainmaker Shock. Shock. Yeah. Then new IWGP champion, the youngest, much like Randy Orton, mm. youngest IWGP champion at the time, 24 year old. Tana, Okada beat Tanahashi. Then the, 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 the go the full circle. Twelve years later, 2024, same February, same week, same building in Os Osaka. Tanahashi and Okada meeting for the final time. Or oh, final time, final time for for now. Yes, but for now. The, yeah, this you know, 36 year old. Twelve years later, 36 year old Okada against 47 year old Tanahashi meeting. For the final time, it's like a very honorable setup. And now the president, I mean, he, Tanahashi ah, didn't have yeah, to do right. it. Yeah. President Tanahashi didn't have to do it, but it's like he's sending him off yeah, hmm. to the bigger and better thing. I mean, I'm not saying WWE is bigger and better thing. That we, we're probably not going to talk about Vince's lawsuit or anything like that today, but uh, well, well, that's well, big, right? It's big, but I feel uh, like a lot of people are going to be talking about it today. And yeah, I think we yeah. need to wait to learn a lot yeah, more information. Yeah, I just happened to 
I just read this 64 page, you know, uh, the affidavit. Yeah. 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 It's bad. It looks bad. damning. I mean, yeah. But did you ever hear the idiom where there's smoke, there's fire? So, yeah, and it's like a very detailed. It's it's extremely detailed from some of the parts yeah. that I saw. It's a little too yeah. detailed for what so from what I read, but mm -hmm. uh, and also the 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 photocopy of that the phone text. Yeah. I haven't gotten that far into it. No spoilers, okay. but um, okay, but oh, <laughs> it's like a it's very graphic. I'm gonna wait to uh, not yeah, but there's, no, we're not gonna go into that. But, uh, that yeah. that's why I, it was hard for me to say WWE being simply better, bigger, and better things. You know, but the, as a wrestling, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. but as a wrestling, From Okada's point talent, of view, new yeah, challenge. Like a, yeah, in a place he hasn't been to, mm -hmm. and he's never been WrestleMania. And if he signed, he's a type of a superstar who be introduced the night after WrestleMania. Sure. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because WrestleMania is already produced and complete. Everything all set up, and just, it's going to be the biggest event, of course. But the night after WrestleMania always. Is like a season premiere, mm -hmm. like a big time new. I mean, like a big superstar newcomer, you know, being introduced or a new storyline, new angle, something always introduced, like a season premiere. So that's the perfect night that Okada, you know, should be debuting. And I'm hoping, and I'm hoping he will be introduced as somebody very special instead of being sent to NXT or anything like that. I mean, I can't imagine they would change his name to like a Hideo Itami or something. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, I'll take that. That take you know Shinsuke Nakamura as, as an example. I think Shins that's going to be the yeah, blueprint. Yeah, Shinsuke Nak Nakamura hasn't changed much. He is he's using his real name and the costume. Nothing stereotypical Japanese about it. Although he has the mist, but, but he the, officially has the mist from Muta because yeah, it's right, given to right. him. Last year, the yeah, DNA. And, and a single, yeah, a single match, so yes. it makes sense. But uh, it's not like you know, you be in a different costume and different name and different character and the whole thing. He should be Kazuchika Okada himself, absolutely the rainmaker. And, yeah, and I'm hoping they'll put somebody like Paul Heyman. Wow, imagine that. Hmm. I mean, like he's like he. My name is Paul Heyman. Mm -hmm. I'm introducing the international biggest superstar of our time. Then people, you know, because WWE Universe is kind of an arrogant in certain way that uh, what's not happening in WWE never happened or never existed. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how they've been trained. You know, this WWE is the only place. If, if it didn't happen in WWE ring, it never happened. Exactly. Conditioned. So. Yeah. So that's why either somebody like Paul Heyman or Triple H himself should be introducing Kazushika Okada in the ring. Yeah, the latest signing of WWE. And this may be the biggest signing of the decade. And finally, this international superstar who never worked, much like when he introduced Sting. A little mm -hmm. bit late, mm -hmm. you know, in his career, but he was 50-something then. But the, somebody who's never worked in WWE ring, but he will be introduced as somebody very special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ooh. so that's what they need to do with Okada. Well, we'll, well see. Maybe, maybe, but maybe, 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 just maybe he might sign with AEW, and I might be all wrong. That's fine. You know, it's something mm -hmm. similar, very similar, happened with Katsuhiko Nakajima last year, last October. Similar path, but I think he he's doing something. He's going a different way right now. Nakajima, he's he's doing his work with All Japan and such. But just like uh, Okada's honoring. Dates after his contract, Nakajima did as well and did a couple final Korakuen Hall show, final Osaka show, final Yokohama, etc. etc. Yeah, so okay, we'll talk about we'll probably talk about all Japan in probably our next episode. There's okay. a lot to talk but, about with them, yeah, because we have a lot more to share in you know, okay next time, yeah, okay, next time, yeah, but it's sketchy right now. But so we, when we talk about Okada, yes, that he, uh, in my opinion, he should be just. The biggest addition to WWE roster. I know not everybody likes to hear that. Everybody likes to imagine seeing him where they want him to be, but I think AEW? To... Sure, people have all kinds of opinions. They want to see him all yeah, kinds but, of places, uh, but right, like you're saying, provided that 
Okada has three to five year run with WWE. Okay, then he can still go to AEW though. Of course, as a main event. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, well, it depends on what the man wants to do. Like I brought up Nakajima because that's one way you can do it. You can go freelance a little bit, explore. I remember when Taiji Ishimori, before he signed with New Japan, I remember he would dabble. He went to TNA and he went to, he did indies in the US and he popped around and then he solidified. Uh, Takagi, uh, Shingo Takagi did as well. You know what I mean? Well, who knows? The, uh, the, this January 25th thing was TNA Impact that the Okada appeared. That's how he wants people to think. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. and he's not going there. But yeah. it's a great press, so yeah, yeah, I think so. And also, appearance in American Ring, American Turf, of course. Yeah, but technically yeah. it's yeah. Canadian, but it's uh, whatever. Oh, okay, okay. Neither okay. here nor but, there but the these days. English speaking world, sure. Yeah, external yeah. world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we talked about Ibushi and Marufuji, and if people want to, you know, send us, you know, different opinion or questions, we'll answer that. And we talked about Okada, and then. And then if people have different opinion or questions, we'll take that, you know. Please, yeah. And yeah. And uh, then we have to talk about Killer Khan. Yes, yeah. the late Killer Khan. Because, yeah, because he officially had retired back in 1987, meaning that the, he was gone 37 years ago. 37 years, meaning that if you were like a late 40s into early 50s, they were still in junior high school. Mm. when he retired so it's not like kind of wrestler that people remember you have to be old enough to remember anything about killer khan yeah i mean and if you if you are old enough you definitely remember hulkamania killer khan was a big part of hulkamania at least if you, yeah that's from what i remember also i have a question quickly did after he retired killer khan did he immediately move back to japan or did he live in the states uh he during okay between 78 79 into like 84 he was actually living in florida married yeah I, I you know the first time i ever saw killer khan i remember it wasn't on a wrestling tv show it was on a kids tv show in america with missing oh, really? I, yeah I, I, I appeared as a monster he was like a, it was like a kids game show where like the kids would face like a special like adults like a celebrities like sports people or and they one episode they had to fight against uh killer con and i believe missing link and some other guy guys that were oh, in WWE probably the when time. he works world-class data stand yeah because missing been. link sounds like world-class dallas i don't mm. know if these guys were actively working at the time though i think they were maybe just retired or or oh yeah. okay okay but the, he was the killer con was type of wrestler that he worked wwf of course and NWA Florida, NWA Georgia. He mm -hmm. worked Bill Watts, you know, mid mid south wrestling, mid south meaning like your Mississippi, Louisiana, Oklahoma, not right. Then he he had a run in Mexico. He he went up to Calgary, and he had WWE at the time when he initially worked WWE. It was like 81, 82, 83. That it was before national expansion, mm. meaning that. The, that the New York, the Boston, the you know, the pretty much East Coast area, but he worked all over these what we used to call it territory days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then also the biggest run was that the uh, eighty one, supposedly, supposedly of course, and he broke under the giant's leg. It was big. In reality, yeah, in reality, uh, that in hotel room. Uh, when Andre the Giant tried to get up in hotel room, he broke his leg. Sure. But the Vince McMahon Senior, not this Vince McMahon, but the Vincent James McMahon Senior, he came up with the idea, Killer Khan broke Andre the Giant's leg. It, the killer was born. Hmm. And not just Madison Square Garden in the Boston and, uh, you know, Philadelphia or Baltimore. He, this Andre the Giant and Killer Khan package went up to Toronto, Montreal, Louisiana, the, this, he went to different territory as a package. So under the giant, the, he was a traveling superstar all, all year long. You know, it's under contract with Vince, Vince McMahon Senior's WWF, but under the giant traveled all year long doing all the battle royals and things, right? 
different territory when all the different NWA and AWA company were harmonized, just geographic territory. And he was like a Vince McMahon senior's ambassador under the gen going different places. Most of the time they're doing battle royal. When under the gen come to your town, it's a spec like a mega show, right? Mm -hmm. And one year it was under the giant against Killer Khan package deal. This guy broke under the giant's leg, man, kind of thing. And so he was a pretty much like beyond territory superstar, Killer Khan was. Yeah. Like an probably, attraction. Yeah. And probably people think he was from really from Mongolia, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Where did the uh, Mongolian gimmick come from? When he, he first, like excursion, you know, mm. he was sent to Mexico. He was sent to Mexico in 78. And his name was Temujin Mongol. Temujin is Genghis Khan's child name. Mm -hmm. Came up by Karl Gotch. None other than Karl hey. Gotch. Wow. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Well, Karl Gotch, when you say it was a pioneer of MMA and all these old shoot wrestling and all these things. But all in all, he was a professional wrestler too. Mm. You know? And Karl Gotch, it was useless trivia, but Karl Gotch gave Sakaguchi his first atomic drop, you know, like a, for the butt. Mm. I mean, no, no Japanese wrestler was doing it, so he came up. Okay, Sakaguchi is as, as tall and big as he, he was. He should use Japanese. One Japanese wrestler should use atomic drop. So Korogach gave Sakaguchi atomic drop, and in, Korogach gave Inoki octopus, the signature octopus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Manji Gatame. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also Saka that the Ricky Cho, uh, that the he Korgach also gave Ricky Choshu his signature scorpion death rock. I mean, after it's like a came uh, uh, actually, Korgach spent a lot of time in Mexico, mm -hmm. okay. And he, it was from Hamley's gym that the, you have Mexican jabe, like mm -hmm. me Mexican submissions. They came up with this, you know, scorp scorpion death lock and it became Ricky Choshu's signature move for the next 40 years. If it wasn't for you know Ricky Choshu's Scorpion Death Rock, there was no sharpshooters. You know what I'm saying? So it's a useless trivia, but it had a lot of that the Korogach had a fingerprint print on a lot of historical things. Anyhow, this Temujin Mango, that the young child name of Genghis Khan, Temujin Mango name was given by Korogach. That was Killer Khan's very first name in Mexico. Then he, you know, after Mexico, he went to NWA Florida, then became Killer Khan, Genghis Khan, grown up, <laughs> yeah, adult life, yeah. And NWA was, NWA Florida at the time was like a Dusty Rose, the Jack Briscoe, the Eddie Graham, the, like a golden era of your NWA territory. And Killer Khan was like instant killer, key, he, big heel, yeah. And Kenao Khan was an interesting character because he shouldn't be doing Mike, right? Mm. I mean, he's like more like an Abdul the Butcher or King Curtis type that the, he should be doing, making face. Mm, Mad you know. Yeah, and then heel manager should be doing the talking. And in Florida, uh, Taiga Hattori was his manager before he was a referee, Taiga Hattori, the same Taiga Hattori <laughs> that we know from New Japan. And in Sonny King, the black guy, he was also manager. And when he went to first round with WWF, he had a friendly blasty, of mm. course, Killer Khan. Then went down down south in Louisiana, he had people like Gary Hart and Scandal Akba. Mm. Always had this typical signature heel manager of the territory. And what Killer Khan did was this. <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, to the, he didn't speak a word of English, which is fine because he just does work, you know. And uh, he went to world class. He went to Louisiana, went to NWA, Georgia, NWA, Florida, and went up to WWF. You know, now, of course, had a single match program against Bob Backlund at the time, too. Yeah. And the biggest round was, though, his single match program was under the giant, 81, mm -hmm. 82. And also, there was a single round robin spring tournament in New Japan called Madison Square Garden Series. 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. Yeah, five year period, 78 to 82, be until inaugural IWGP tournament. You know, the very first IWGP tournament was 1983. Okay. 
up until then, there was a Madison Square Garden series. All the superstars from WWF goes to Japan and fight people like Inoki, the Fujinami, the Sakaguchi, the young Riki Choshu, and all these things as a package. And the final Madison Square Garden series, spring of 82, the tournament final was Antonio Inoki against Andrew the Giant. Inoki got injured. And you know, you needed a sub. Mm -hmm. You would think people like Fujinami or Sakaguchi go in there, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, they had the idea we'll use Killer Khan as Inoki's sub. And you know, that the Under the Giant and Killer Khan was a tournament final. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, Andre won, but it was like, you, this is like, a, that's the main event, the, the big arena in America, you know. The, the, that was actually the biggest year for Killer Khan. And useless trivia that the December of 82, there was a Madison Square Garden tag team tournament. The final was Inoki and Hulk Hogan tag team against Killer Khan and Taiga Toguchi, Kim Dak, you know, Taiga Chan Lee. Yeah. So it was like a Japanese heel against Inoki and young Hulk Hogan tag team. It was a tournament final. See, Hulk Hogan was a big, huge superstar in, New in Japan years before he was a Hulkamania. Yes, yeah. yeah. And also, another useless trivia was, though, when <clears throat> Killer Khan was working in NWA Florida in Tampa, there was an apartment complex that all the boys lived. Mm -hmm. Fujinami lived there. Taiga Hattori lived there. Upstairs, ha young Hulk Hogan was living in the same apartment complex. Yeah. He was trained to be a wrestler, but he was still playing bass for the band Ruckus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they were friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Hulk Hogan and Killer Counts always been friends. And 10 years ago already, wow, 29, 29, uh, 14, 10 years ago, Hulk Hogan actually came to Japan for vacation mm -hmm. and wanted to find the GTR, you know, the Toyota G GTR five speed. It's like like legendary, you know, five speed car that is hard to find. Hulk Hogan is like a car collector, right? Then came to Japan to find mint condition GTR. And he was staying at the Kiyo Plaza Hotel. And in the first night, he took cab to Killer Khan's restaurant, wanted to catch up with his friends. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they were close. And what Killer Khan said, you know, as how Koga walk into the restaurant, no appointment, nothing, right? Terry, Terry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, yeah. So they were friends. And hmm. How Kogan is so misunderstood too that he's actually very, very friendly, nice guy, you know? Yeah. And they got together, you know? Killer Khan's English, not perfect, but doesn't matter, right? Communicate. Yeah. And you mentioned Killer Khan had a pretty popular bar restaurant. Restaurant, yeah, bar, grill, bar and grill. I spent every New Year's Eve for the past, right until right before the pandemic. So, 2017, 18, 19 into 20. Yeah, I was there just about every year and have Toshikoshi Soba. Mm -hmm. yeah. New yeah. Year's is uh, that's noodles. a the New Year's noodles. Yeah. <laughs> and when you have this celebrity restaurant and bars, you know, named after this big celebrity or something, when you go there, they're never there, right? Mm -hmm. But the, for the Kirakan's bar, he's always there, always there, you know. And he's the one come and take his take order, mm -hmm. you know, from you. And he's the one bringing food to your table. Mm -hmm. And when he when bar's not really too crowded, he'll probably sit next to you and then, you know, talk his wrestling tales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in Super Okubo. Friend. In Okubo, right. yeah. And when the pandemic broke up, that the, he had to close the place mm -hmm. in 2021, but he reopened the bar in another part of uh, Nishi Shinjuku. And oh, that okay. was the last place. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So he had probably like five different locations in the last 20 years or so. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But he always was like in food, you know, like a restaurant business. Hmm. You know why? Because it's chanko. It's a sumo culture. He was born in 1947, meaning like two years after the war, right? And he was 76 years old. Right? Okay, 10th grade, he played basketball. But he quit high school and joined sumo wrestling in 1963. He had, he was sumo wrestler until like 1970. So he had seven year sumo career. That's where you cut your tooth, right? Like mm -hmm. as, as a, you know, 
sports celebrity and small culture and being in front of the public eyes and as big as he is as a Japanese, he's huge, right? Mm. And he was perfect for sumo, but it wasn't quite Yokozuna or anything like that. But uh, for he quit sumo in, in spring of 1970 and joined JWA, Nippon Pro Wrestling, Nippon Pro Wrestling in 71. And 73, he was one of the four wrestlers who joined New Japan with Sakaguchi. Seiji Sakaguchi, Daigoro Oshiro, Oz Masashi Ozawa, Leiro Kirokan, and Kengo Kimura, young Kengo Kimura. Yeah. Those four wrestlers quit Japan Pro Wrestling and brought the TV Asahi deal with them and joined the Ino second year of In Inoki's New Japan. Mm. And after Sakaguchi's group joined New Japan and Inoki and started a TV, you know, World Pro Wrestling, TV Asahi, I mean, that the TV, that the program that runs all the way till now, mm. that JWA went down two months after. So it was like he was part of the, you know, changing a big change of landscape of Japanese wrestling. And he was Sakaguchi's young guy, yeah, at the time. Then 76, the very first overseas tour the Kirakan Ozawa had was with young Fujiwara. In interesting, huh? Mm. Yoshiaki Fujiwara, Fujiwara Amba Fujiwara, young Fujiwara and young Ozawa was sent to Germany, then West Germany, huh? Mm, mm, that's I right. mean, like, yeah, because there was West Germany and East Germany, but the, he was sent to German, Germany, yeah, for one tour. I mean, like a fall to winter season tour, yeah. Then came back. So actually, he was there in the ringside when Inoki had this famous single mixed fight against Muhammad Ali. He was in ringside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting, huh? With Carl Gotch. Yeah, but well, was one of the young boys, so he wasn't yeah. important then. But so he was there. See, yeah, in Inoki, Muhammad Ali fight. You see Carl Gotch in ringside, Sakaguchi in ringside, and everybody else. In, but he was actually in, in the back background. You know, you, you mentioned the he was around for the the changing of the tides in Japanese wrestling, but even in the eighties, he he was around right. for that little Ishingu. change too, right? Because that's right. He turned turned heel in the ring and joins you know Riki Choshu, Masa Saito, and Kunyaki Kobayashi, and this is a heel. Now we, we call it a faction, right? Mm. It's like NWO. And, yeah, that actual heel faction became japan pro wrestling and ricky choshu and his 15 guys actually moved to all japan and signed with Jan baba yeah that was interesting there was like 84 uwf guys left new japan right like maeda the takada the fujiwara the all just like 10 guys gone then ricky choshu and his 15 guys gone and all of a sudden that the new japan became skeleton again then then you had rookie Muto, Cho no Hashimoto in that pack. Mm -hmm. The history is interesting. Yeah. Very, very. But uh, Ricky, yes, Killer Khan was part of the Ricky Choshu's group who migrated from New Japan to Old Japan. Then what was happening was that two years later, in spring of 1987, Ricky Choshu and his guys, like, you know, Kuniaki Kobayashi, the rookie Hiroshi Hase, the mm -hmm. rookie Kensuke Sasaki, the super strong machine, the, Norio Honaga, that group went back to New Japan. Mm. Mysteriously, Killer Khan was not in that package. Spring of 87, he was one of the few guys, along with like a people like Yoshiaki Yatsu and Haruka Eigen, that he decided to stay with all Japan package. And later years, like up until now, that the in when Ricky uh, that the Killer Khan has this YouTube channels, he was bad mouthing Ricky Choshu until the last days, you know, mm. for some reason. I mean, like, he was not in the package to go back to New Japan. Right. Instead, he stayed with All Japan in the spring of '87. But that was the year that uh, Killer Khan decided to have his final tour with WWF. All by himself, he went back to states in in, in summer of '87. Had a program against. Hulk Hogan right away, and he was tag teaming with Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, and he had another run with you know eighty seven version of WWF. 
Then he came back to Japan with no retirement match or no no retirement ceremony, and he's been gone in the ring ever since. So he disappeared from wrestling scene in 1987 and never came back once. Huh. That's rare. But wrestling. he was in the public eyes because he was running his own restaurant. It's been popular, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a, one of the very mysterious part of Killer Khan's disappearing and retiring. He did retire in 87 without making like an official announcement. Mm -hmm. He just quit. Yeah. No Oni. Never, style yeah, never went back to New Japan, never went back to old Japan. His final destination was WWF and short pro program with Hulk Hogan. Then came home and never wrestled again. Interesting, huh? Mm, very unique. Yeah. And I can't yeah. compare him to yeah. too many. Music. Yeah, because most guys will come back and have at least few matches, huh? Usually, especially in pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, after 87, he never once went back to the ring. But he was still Killer Khan. Well, Not Masashi Khan. Ozawa. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Masashi Ozawa. Well, that's his real name. But his bar was always Killer Khan's bar. Mm -hmm. Restaurant. Yeah. And he always looked like Killer Khan. After his wrestling, he never his he never grew his hair back. He always had this Fu Manchu goatee, and he was big guy, and he always treated other people as Killer Khan, and he was treated as Killer Khan. Yeah, yeah. And also, he was selling Killer Khan T-shirt and sports towel and other photos and other things, right? But mm. he never sold anything on the internet. Mm. <laughs> the old fashioned, huh? Very. Yeah, yeah, because you have to go to his restaurant to buy his gimmick. Nothing was on the internet. I mean, this day and age. Everything yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. But so people who went to, uh, came to Japan, who managed to go to Killer Khan's restaurant, they all got pictures taken with Killer Khan and bought t shirt mm -hmm. and ate his food. Yeah. And uh, he'll, he'll be friendly enough to be talking his wrestling stories mm -hmm. yeah kind of a sumo style thing too there's a lot of sumo yeah, i think so that... once you quit you don't come back mm -hmm. yeah that's with a that, very sumo thing and opening a restaurant chatting with the yeah that, that's very sumo and chanko chanko, chanko yeah. it's a chanko very, food yeah it's pretty i guess that's why he make what makes him different is he kind of took that sumo sumo, post, sumo post value. life post sumo life lifestyle yeah i think so yeah Pretty quiet. And once you like, a, like what Tenru said, once you're a small wrestler, you always be small wrestler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he was Tenru was small wrestler before he was professional wrestler. You know, much like Killer Khan. Yeah, like Ricky Dozan and, and Ricky Dozan. Yeah, yeah. So once you're a small wrestler, up here always will be small wrestler, huh? Mm, I think Value so. orientation. You know, lots of uh, traditions and traditions, rituals to yeah. remember and etiquette and I guess, yeah. being in public and such. And everything cash instead of credit card. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, that much cash in his pocket always. Yeah. I mean, you could apply credit card and they'll give it to you, but he just doesn't trust credit card. Always carry a lot of cash in his pocket. Very small, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, Killer Khan. I think this is our generation's role or, or or like I think it's our task that we will talk about Killer Khan and because uh, what was interesting is uh, another thing was that his matches are not in New Japan world mm. none of the matches you know why because that the TV Asahi people and New Japan people came to Killer Khan's restaurant before they you know, started this uh, New Japan World streaming service that uh, it, it, would it be okay to have you in there and all these things, like also sign the paper, you know, that that, that he will, it's kind of like a disclaimer, right? Mm -hmm. All his previous matches archived on New Japan World. So you have the match we, we talked about, Under the Giant against Killer Khan, the Madison Square Garden tournament final, or the, the Madison Square Garden tag team tournament final, Inoki, Hulk Hogan against Killer Khan and Kim Dog. That, that should be in there, don't you think? Historical sure. matches. But none of the, the Killer Khan matches are on New Japan War because he says, I'm not interested. Don't put me in there. Hmm. 
A few so, wrestlers did that. Like Brock Lesnar did something similar too, and there was some. You can't find certain wrestlers' matches on mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on New Japan. Right. World. But they will be willing to pay certain per- you know percentage you know appearance, right? But the killer can said, "No, I'm not interested. Don't put me in there." What's interesting is that like a seventies matches, like Inoki against Tiger Jeet Singh or something, in the background, young killer guns walking around the ring, right? Mm-hmm. It has a mosaic on it. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, like a strange looking pixelated. They, like it, they can't even show his face, like it's yeah, a criminal they were like, or something. <laughs> not, but the, like a, if you show, I mean, it's not. He never said that he, I, you know want to be part of this new japan right. world you can't show you his know. likeness on the screen right 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 he needs to yeah. sign for it yeah or killer khan's lawyer can always sue you but he's sure. not the type <laughs> you know right yeah yeah uh-huh. but uh what's interesting like a seven years matches that the young killer khan was out walking around the ring he's like a... <laughs> strange Funny. real strange interesting yeah. but uh now that he's gone that the, maybe maybe his family can ally that the new japan war should have important matches of killer khan's career in there mm. you know or maybe bootleg that the you know nwa florida footage or that the, some fan will put a old new japan you know matches on the you know on youtube or something like a, maybe a Today you can find some Killer Khan matches. Sure, you can find yeah. uh, Killer Khan matches on YouTube. I think there's always yeah. fans uploading old stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. But they they'll come and erase it though. Come and erase it, and another <laughs> fan will upload it. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But it's like Killer Khan's its legacy and accomplishment. His name being so overlooked, mm. you know, for today's fans. That's why we have to. This our role to keep his legacy in residency. Yeah, we're happy to. Yes, we're happy to. Okay, too. so that's what we were talking about today. Yeah, that's what's going on this week. And then next time we'll talk about what's going on in all Japan and other stuff. Whatever I, this Okada then thing we'll is going to develop. I mean, next episode, we'll, we'll probably will know more about Kazuchika Okada too. Sure, and even yeah. maybe with Ibushi is a condition, and 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 all kinds. Yeah, of Yeah, and basically Ibushi is still freelancer in mm-hmm. Japan. Yeah. Is he under contract to the EW? Yes. Yeah. For, as he far has as appeared. I, he has no, appeared in AEW. From my, I can only say from my end, we were promoting him as Kota Ibushi from AEW. From right, right. Oh, that's right. And so, also, Katsuyori Shibata is AEW. AEW, ROH, yeah. or... Yeah, Kong, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, not New Japan Strong at all. He officially quit New Japan Strong. Because that's New Japan, Bushi Road property and... Yeah, stuff yeah, he, yeah. Is he, with he his... officially resigned from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting that, the, you know, people like Tanahashi, Shinsuke Nakamura, Okada, and Katsuyori Shibata, all these superstars going separate way. Isn't that interesting? We'll say once, up, once upon a time, they were Young Lion. I think this is just a new chapter, especially yeah, for those guys so. that you mentioned, because I think they'll be around for a long time. Of course, because they so, will be superstar for thirty year period, and we'll and, talk about them. Yeah, like Kazuchika we're Okada about has his his legacy and his path. Tanah- Hiroshi Tanahashi has his path, you know, and his destiny. Shinsuke Nakamura choose his path and his his career in America, and yeah, it's, everybody's you know decided the certain path they choose. Very interesting, huh? Because remember. Hashimoto, Muto, and Chono, they all choose different paths at the end. Very different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's another, I mean, whole new era now, huh? 2024. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, exactly. (laughs) And a happy belated birthday to you as well. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, but I think, did we cover a lot today? I think so. I think we... That's what's going on in the world of Japanese pro wrestling this month, for real. This is the, the, the most talked about topics these are i can't think of uh, and if, if if people want us to talk about something they can contact us and yeah we'll talk yeah about i it. and also i really needed to talk about killer Khan, you know course, for the, the english speaking yeah. audience yeah yeah and so i guess until next time fumi take it away okay well where would i where can i can i be found 
Oh, that's right. We haven't done this in a while. <laughs> uh, okay, Fumi on Twitter, Saito on Facebook. I, oh, sorry, X, not Twitter. Okay, <laughs> on on X, Fumi Hikodayo at F U M I H I K O D A Y O Fumi Hikodayo on X, formerly known as Twitter. Or oh, I have Instagram too, Fumi Saito two thousand one. Or you can just message me on Facebook, Fumi Saito. Hmm. On Twitter or X, whatever it's called, I'm at Justin M. Nipper, K-N-I-P-P-E-R. And you can write us down. I mean, you can email us. And we take all the questions too. Yeah. Let's answer, yeah, questions. So uh, we always have new audience, younger audience. So bring them on. Okay. And until next time, who we So it? long from Tokyo. Did I do okay? Very good. Yeah, I think we did uh, pretty, you know, I mean, pretty good episode. Yeah. It's going to say stop right now, so don't worry.